Welcome to Friday Takeaway. We delve into Tan's Revents and Tan's companies this week, but we need to start with... The US Federal Reserve, led by Chair Jerome Powell, raised its benchmark interest rate by 25 basis points, which was actually expected, and lowered its projections for future hikes from 3 to 2. But here's the thing that made people a little jittery. The Fed was less dovish than expected in its post-meeting statement. So while it said that the hikes would be appropriate, most had been expecting them to kind of ease up on the gas a little. But whatever it is, it can be seen as a big act of defiance to President Trump, who has been constantly bad-mouthing the Fed on Twitter and considers it incredible, not in a good way, that they are even considering another hike. The ringgit and regional currencies also saw a knee-jerk reaction to the development and some definite weakening. Katsessis is expecting USD MYR to trade between 4 ringgit 15 and 4.20 in the near term. Back home, it was a busy week, ranging from news that former AMNO chief Datuk Sri Zayed Hamidi was stepping down to the fact that Malaysia is apparently taking Goldman Sachs to court. But on the corporate side, the Securities Commission is maintaining its decision to reprimand and fine Lotte Chemical Titan due to their failure to inform the SE of material developments prior to its listing in 2017. Naughty, naughty. Lotte Chem said that they are currently conducting internal reviews and seeking external advice, but the SE also showed their ultimate displeasure at bankers Maybank and auditors Ernst & Young for letting the mistakes even happen in the first place. Finally, you have to feel a little for IHH Healthcare. Not only is Kazana apparently considering pairing its stake, but after what seems like months of courting, IHH's mandatory open offer for the 26% in India's Fortis Healthcare has been halted following a court ruling. However, according to a report IHH management told its staff that it actually remains very committed to its India investment and that this development in no way diminishes its resolve to grow the Indian healthcare group. This week, we take a look at the companies from the stable of businessman and Cardiff City FC owner Tan Sri Vincent Tan because it was reported this week that Tan is planning a major overhaul of his Brijaya group through a series of corporate exercises. So this week, we pit its flagship Brijaya Corp, which is at the heart of the restructuring plan and whether it will get a new lease on life versus Brijaya Food with its Starbucks crown jewel on one side of the scale and its struggling Kenny Rogers business on the other side. So let's begin. A more pertinent question would actually be, what do they not do? Brijaya Corp is Vincent Tan's flagship company, a conglomerate with history dating back to 1984 and covers absolutely almost everything. Property, consumer marketing, hotels, motors and of course F&B. So Vincent Tan announced this week his big plan to restructure his businesses because according to him, the group's listed entities, b 7-Eleven, B Corp, it's all undervalued. Especially B Corp since it's a very diversified conglomerate as we pointed out. This is a lot to take in, so okay, bear with me. Right, B Corp is in the middle of selling its Four Seasons Hotel and Hotel Residences Kyoto for almost 3 billion ringgit, which will translate into an investment gain of 400 million US dollars. Then B Corp has the funds to possibly take 7-Eleven private. In the meantime, B Corp may carve out B Land's assets and list them in Singapore. And that, he is also intending to inject his private assets into Brajaya Media, given that his business has not been going that well. It is true though what Vincent Tan said, B Corp's share price has not been doing that well. And even when the news broke on Thursday, the share price didn't really jump. The word you're looking at here is churn because all the volumes were heavy in comparison on Thursday with over 35 million shares traded, the stock again did not move that much and has always moved within this very tight band. Okay, it should be pointed out that B Corp, B Land and 7-Eleven all said to Bursa Malaysia that all these plans were just major shareholder Vincent Tan's personal ideas and strategies. And apparently the boards have not been aware or even discussed such plans. And keep in mind that hotel, it's still not sold yet. Also, B Corp's results have not been the best, let's say. It ended FY18 with about 377 million in the hole because all its businesses across the board did not do well. But it did manage to return to the black for its first quarter of FY19 that ended in July, mostly due to a one-off disposal of a subsidiary and better revenue from gaming. Nobody covers this stock, but if you judge by the historical performance, highest close was 39 cent back in May, the lowest was 27 cent, and average for them, 30 and a half cent. B Food, like its name suggests, has three main F&B properties. The oldest is Kenny Rogers Roasters, where it is the worldwide franchise holder. Did, did you all know that? Well, its star is undoubtedly Starbucks. It also runs Jollibean, by the way, which sells soybean-based food. Solid Earnings is the name of the game, and for its second quarter of FY19, it saw net profit improve by 21% to just over 7 million ringgit. Now, this is actually mainly due to higher same-store sales, growth from its Starbucks cafes, and the opening of new outlets. 
The group had earlier said it would plan to open around 25 to 30 new stores for FY19, which actually ends, by the way, for them in April next year. According to M Investment Bank, it points out that valuations are pegged to a PE of 25 times and says it is justified because it believes that beef food is on the cusp of a revival with expected earnings growth of 73%. So while the coffee is good, it's Kenny Rogers Roast. This division continues to temper results as it continues to close stores, namely from 81 to 75 in the last reported quarter. Yes, this isn't good, but according to analysts, this is due to management kind of like weeding out the loss-making outlet. And Vincent Tan also said that Kenny Rogers is breaking even now as management has been very successful in stemming the bleeding. Analysts seem overwhelmingly positive with beef food with six buys, with target prices ranging from 175 to 2 ringgit 5 cent. Am Invest, which has a target price of 2 ringgit 1 cent, says that it expects input costs to be favourable on the back of cheaper coffee, while Hong Leong, which has the highest target price, says that it's encouraged by Kenny Rogers' narrowing losses. There is only one holdout though, CAF, which actually has a hold with a target price of 1 ringgit 45. But looking at the current share price, the average for the past year has been around one ringgit fifty, and more recently it's been in the one thirties. Based on that, even if you take the lowest end of the estimate at Cap's whole call, there appears to be some upside.